here is the first part of your chapter two test review. There's a second video as well. This one just has four questions on it. So a little bit shorter and then the other one has all the rest. Um, so in question number 44 here, you'll, you're given a graph and then you're asked if these statements are true or false. Um, so the first one says the limit as x approaches negative one from the right side. So that is referring to this right here. And it's asking, is the y value there one? And yes, it is. That is a true statement. The second one's asking about as x approaches two. Well, it's asking about both the left and the right side when it doesn't mention that. And are they both approaching the same value? Yes. And what is that value? It's a one. The question says it's a two. And so we're going to say that is false. It should be a one. Next. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right side. Well, here is 1 right here. Here's the right side, so it's referring to that part. Is that approaching a y value of 1? And yes, it is, so that is true. And then we have the next one. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So both this side and this side are both going down towards that same y value of zero. They are equal to each other, so that one is true. And now this right column of questions. The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x does not exist. Well, let's see. Up here at 2 again, it sure does exist. Both the left and right side are approaching the same number. They do not have to reach that number. So that there is false, the limit does exist, and the correct answer would be 1. Next, we have the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side. So that's over here talking about this. It's approaching a y value of 2. So that is true. And the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist. That is also true because here at 1, these are going to different numbers. The only other question that could come up here would be if I ask you about f of 2. f of 2, remember, is the point. It has nothing to do with the limit. The point is at 2. So that would be another type of question that could be asked there. All right, the next one that I wanted to talk about is this one, number 11. It says, um, determine the limit by substitution. Substitution means you simply can just take the number that's here and substitute it in for each of the y values that are right there. So let's see, when I substitute the negative 3 in for the y squared, I'd get 9. Substitute it in for the 4 times y, I'd get minus 12, and then plus 3. And then let's see, down in the denominator, I'd get 9 minus 3. So in the numerator, I have negative 3 plus 3, which is... 0, and then in the denominator, 9 minus 3 is 6, and 0 divided by 6 is 0. Now, if this would have come out that the denominator was 0 instead, I'd probably have to go back up and um, factor it, try to reduce it, that sort of thing. But a 0 in the numerator is perfectly fine. All right, the next question I actually go over in the other video as well. But in that video, I mentioned that you would always have a calculator for this one. And you would not have a calculator for this one, as I mentioned actually before already in this class. You do want to think about these different functions, though. y equals x squared looks something like that. And y equals sine of x is a graph that just keeps doing this. It keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so when you want a right end behavior and a left end behavior on these right here, you got to look for the left end and the left end of this thing. Which one's growing faster? That is the one that is going to, you know, win out in the race for the left end there. Well, the parabola definitely, it asks you, for a right end behavior model and a left end behavior model. This word model means you need an equation. Okay, so on the test, I will be marking off if you don't have an equation like this. 
And next, the left end. Well, here's the left end of this one. The left end of this one is bebopping between that negative 1 and positive 1. So this one here wins out. Y equals X squared is the left or the right end behavior model. Oh, I guess I answered those in the backwards order. The, the left end is Y equals X squared and the right end is Y equals X squared. And then the final one in this video that I want to talk about is this use of theorem 7. That there is your squeeze theorem or your sandwich theorem. Uh, you might remember um, AP had taken it off and then they put it back on, so we definitely need to talk about that. All right, so when they ask us anything having to do with sine or cosine, one thing you know about sine is that it bebops between negative 1 and 1. So you could, you could kind of start out saying this. I know that sine definitely is somewhere between negative 1 and 1. That means sine of anything, you know, even including sine of x squared plus 1, sine of x cubed, sine of anything is going to be bop between negative 1 and 1. And that's where you jump from this knowledge to the actual problem. The squeeze theorem then says, well, what is the limit? as x approaches uh, 0 of sine of x squared plus 1, something along those lines. So what we do is we say, okay, well, what's the limit of each section? What's the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 1? What's the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 1? And what is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1. You have to have this line in it, in your answer, in order to get the points. And this is for not only me, also for AP as well. Now, I can solve this part. The limit as x approaches 0 of a number is just that number. And I can solve this part. The limit as x approaches 0 of a number is just a number. And then in the middle right here, I have the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 1. So for this one here, because my two ends are not the same like they were on the quiz question, then all I can tell is that this limit is somewhere between negative 1 and positive 1. Now let me give you another problem like that, just so that you can see it. What if I asked you instead the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 cubed times sine of 1 over x minus 1 cubed, like that right there. Again, we can actually, you know, take and try to plug this number in to each of these. And one of the things that we're going to find here is that we end up getting 1 minus 1, which is 0 for the first part. And then over here, it's 1 divided by 0. And, ooh, that's undefined right there. So we could use the same theorem on this as well. Let's take and use the same preface we did before. Let's start with this sine of 1 over x minus 1 cubed. Sine of anything, remember, is between negative 1 and 1. Now from there, if I want the problem to also include this, what I could do is I could take and I could multiply each part by x squared minus 1 cubed. The left part, the inside part here. Sorry, my pen is jumping on this screen. x squared minus 1 cubed. And what I would end up with is I would have negative 1 times x squared minus 1 cubed is less than or equal to x squared minus 1 cubed times 1, oh, sign, I left my sign off. Hold on here, one second. Do, 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 do. Of, oh, I just did it again. Sign of... 1 over x minus 1 cubed is less than or equal to 1 times that is just x squared minus 1 
cubed. Now let's take the limit of each part here. So now I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 1, since that's what the question is asking. The limit as x approaches 1, the limit as x approaches 1. And so as I do that right here, the limit as x approaches 1 of negative 1 times x squared minus 1 cubed, when I plug the 1 in, I end up getting 0 times negative 1, which is 0 for this part. The middle stays the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 cubed sine of 1 over x minus 1 cubed. And then over here, when I plug the 1 in, I end up getting a 0. 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 cubed is just 0. So this here is an example showing you this limit is in between 0 and 0, which means the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 cubed sine of 1 over x minus 1 cubed is going to equal 0. If it's less than 0 and greater than 0, then that means it equals 0. So a couple things to remember for sure with the sandwich theorem is if you ever see anything like sine of x over x and you see the limit as x approaches 0 on this, you know that that is 1. You can use that. We actually proved that, even used a graph with it as well throughout the lessons in this chapter. And the other thing that you can remember is whenever you have sine of anything, whatever it is, squared, cubed, anything in there, that that there does end up between negative 1 and 1 because you know the graph of it. It does this right here. So you could actually even do the same thing for cosine. But I wanted to definitely talk about a couple of those that are a little bit different um, just to give you a little bit more experience with it. All right, once you're done watching this video, Go ahead and click on the link for the next video.